Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. So I hope that you all are preparing hard for your examination and this is the video that is going to help you in your phase 1G. So let's quickly begin the questions that we are going to discuss in this video, which includes a very important report from UNICEF that tells us about the migration, the data on migration, particularly it is focusing on the child migration. So we will be looking at that report, we will be looking all other important questions that can be of use in your upcoming NABAD examination. Admit cards bhi aa hai NABAD ke, so I hope that you all have downloaded your admit cards and all the best. So in the beginning only I am saying all the best and uh, I hope that you all do well in your exam. So now on that note, let's begin. Let's know what kind of questions can become a probable question for you in your upcoming examination but before that if you haven't subscribed our channel then do subscribe and hit the bell notification guys and you can also join this telegram group where you will get the link uh, basically the pdf of this session and the link of this telegram group is in description below so here is the first question where is india's first aircraft sorry india's first air force heritage center being established so recently Indian Air Force has signed an agreement with Punjab government for establishing the first ever Air Force Heritage Center in Chandigarh. So this is the right answer. Now guys, can you tell me what is the state bird of Punjab or does Punjab have any kind of state bird in the comment section below? So this is your question that I have put randomly because this question has nothing to do with the Air Force Heritage Center, but still let us let me test your general awareness. So do tell me in the comment section below that what is the state bird of Punjab? Which of the following state union territory observed the nomadic festival for the first time in 2021? Ladakh, Jammu and Kashmir, Sikkim, Tripura and Nagaland in, are in the options and let me tell you the nomadic festival was observed in order to first in order to celebrate the nomadic culture of the state or union territory and second purpose was to boost the tourism that was affected by COVID-19. So we all know that tourism is one sector that has just uh, suffered the major impact of this pandemic. So which state or union territory is it? We have Ladakh, Jammu, Kashmir, Sikkim, Tripura, Nagaland, out of which Ladakh is the right answer. So this is the first time this, uh, this festival is being observed. Moving on to the next question, which state has launched Hara Bhara, a drone-based afforestation program? Kerala, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, West Bengal are in the options out of which the right answer is Telangana. So basically under this drone based afforestation campaign, the drones will be used to spread seeds on forest lands, on the empty forest lands that are barren or semi-arid or the forest lands that have the potential for cultivation. So on those lands, the drones will spread seeds so that those lands can be turned into the lush green uh, areas with a lot of healthy trees. Now, for this initiative, for this campaign, the Telangana government has partnered with a Hyderabad based firm, which is named as Maruth Drone and Maruth Drone's seed copter will be used to spread the, uh, the seeds on the land in Telangana. So this is one scheme and remember that this is one of its kind scheme in India that has been launched wherein afforestation will be done through drones. Where did the first edition of G20 conference of, on women's empowerment take place? So you have all the five options here and let me tell you all of these are cities of Italy because Italy is the chair of G20 for the year 2021. Your task is to tell me the edition that Italy is hosting right now of G20 as the president. Okay, now as far as this conference is concerned, so let me tell you why this conference is very important. 
the reason is that this is the first time that g20 has officially conducted a meeting for women empowerment okay and it took place in a hybrid format therefore the place is important so some of the individuals some of the members have attended the meeting in person whereas other members which also includes the minister of women and child development of india that is smriti irani uh, these ministers have attended the meeting virtually so what is the area or what is the location of this g20 conference on women's empowerment the location is santa margherita legor so this is a place in italy where this uh, g20 conference on women empowerment took place and remember this is the first time that g20 has conducted a formal conference official conference on women empowerment as per unicef's uncertain pathways how gender shapes the experiences of children on the move report dash percent of global population is living in migration in 2020 now guys when you know the answer of this question then you would be shocked that this much percentage of the global population still live in migrations basically they are not living in their country of birth either they are migrated and remember we are talking about migration only in terms of displacement okay so we are not here in the, this report is not focusing on the people who have migrated on their own will the people who have migrated because they wanted to get the education or they wanted to get better job opportunities in another country okay so here we are focusing on the migration that is forced migration or the migration the people who are migrating did not have any other option but to migrate the that is the area that we are looking into in this report so what is the percentage what is the right answer here the right answer is 3.6 million 3.6 percent uh, global population is living in migration in the year 2020 as per this report and remember the major focus of this report is children okay so the very first thing is the number of people who are living outside their country of birth so it is 281 in 2020 and out of this 281 35.5 million are children who are below the age of 18 years and out of these 35.5 million children 13 million refugee were refugees or asylum seekers they are purely the facts that you need to remember if you want to cite these facts in your upcoming examinations descriptive papers or if there is a question directly on these facts in your phase one paper okay the next thing is out of the 35.5 million international child migrants in 2020 boys outnumbered girls by 1.2 million or 6.7 percent so this is the graph that you can see uh, here are the numbers the years are mentioned and these are the population in millions okay so you can see that in 2020 18.3 million boys were migrants in comparison to 17.2 million girls okay around 9 million child migrants lived in middle east and north africa 54.3 percent of these 9 million children were boys western europe showed a more pronounced gender imbalance with boys comprising 52 percent of the 5.6 million child migrants however africa has overturned this gender imbalance because here girls are more in migration girls migrant girls are more in number in comparison to boys now guys, in this picture, you can clearly see the uh, different kinds of concepts that have been given in this report or we can say the outcome, the conceptual outcome that this report has presented. For example, here, what kind of challenges did the children face while they were migrating? So all of this are mentioned here and here certain data has been given. For example, in 2020, 35.5 million children under the age of 18 were living outside their country of birth. This includes refugees, asylum seekers, and any kind of international migrant. Slightly less than half of them were girls, 48%. Boys outnumbered girls by 1.2 million, 
or 6.7 percent so this is the largest ever difference recorded in the girls and boys so this is the summary of this report okay at the end of 2020 10 million of child uh, 10 million child refugees were displaced across borders mostly due to conflict and war around 5.1 million were boys 4.9 million were girls Europe is the only region with comprehensive data on unaccompanied children, unaccompanied child migrants. In 2020, nearly 9 in 10 unaccompanied children seeking asylum in Europe were boys. This shows a gender imbalance that likely points to the heightened perils of the journey for girls. So what is this statement saying? This statement is saying, first of all, it is saying that Europe is the only region that has the comprehensive data on unaccompanied child migrants, the children who were alone, who were migrating. Okay, the next point that it is highlighting is that the number of boys who were migrating does not suggest that the situation of girls were better in when we are looking into the migration scenario. This suggests that the situation for girls, the journey for girls is more difficult, maybe because of the certain kinds of perils that they found that they encountered during their journey. Then last point is at the end of 2020, an estimated 23.3 million girls and boys were living in internal displacement due to conflict, violence or natural disasters. 11.3 million were girls and 11.9 million were boys. Many have been living in displacements for years. So these are the different facts that were highlighted in this report. And this is the next question. Which company has received US dollar 50 million loan from Japanese International Cooperation Agency to cater to the credit demands of women borrowers or towards products that disproportionately benefit women? So basically, one organization from the options. Let's read out the options first. So option A is PNB Gates Limited, CD. Uh, sorry, STCI Primary Dealer Limited, Northern Arc Capital, Ujwan Financial Services Limited, Capital First Limited. So you have the five options. Out of these five options, op option C, Northern Arc Capital is the right answer. So this organization has partnered or taken a loan from Japanese International Cooperation Agency so that it can further give the loans to women borrowers or to the companies that are manufacturing the products that benefit women irrespective of the way, irrespective of the way whether these products are directly benefiting the women or indirectly benefiting the women. If the products are for women, then the loan will be provided to them by this Northern Arc uh, Capital, which is basically a debt platform. So it provides financing also. So that was all. Now do remember that it has, it is providing the JICA, uh, this Japanese International Cooperation Agency is providing the financing in partnership with United States International Development Finance Corporation. So these two organizations have partnered for this. Basically, these two organi organizations are co-financing the Northern Arc Capital so that it can further lend to the women borrowers. Now, guys, the peculiar thing here is that this is the first time that Jika is giving the loan in co-financing with this organization. So that was a salient feature of this partnership. Apart from this, there is nothing much that you need to pay attention to. And here is the end of today's video. I hope that you have enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching it.